Hello and welcome. When we think of Fundus cameras, we usually associate them with brands like Zeiss, Topcon, Canon or Optos. But a few years ago, Centerview introduced Adon. Adon wasn't an ordinary Fundus camera. It offered 60 degrees crystal clear image of the retina. It was a confocal laser scanning system. Required no pupillary dilation was very easy to use and on top of that was very price competitive. Today, Adon is owned by Iker, the same company that makes tonometers. And it offers not 60, but 120 degrees fundus photo in a single shot. My name is Adam Vilengawa. I love ocular imaging and I would be honored if you can stay and listen to my review. I'm going to review Adon fluorescent and geography version. It has autofluorescence, FA, and also true color. There is a version without the fluorescent and geography, and there is also a version without fluorescent and geography nor autofluorescence. Uh, this whole design is futuristic. I like it. It has the polished metal headrest. The rest is made of plastic. Both sides are symmetrical. The labels are uh, looks the same. Uh, there is a tablet which is used for the steering and also viewing the, the sides. And also at the back side we have the power cord, one USB and LAN connectivity. The whole footprint of the device is small. It can stand next to uh, an OCT. Uh, there is an external fixator in the, in the front. The black object is a 3D mouse. It can be used for manual positioning and focus. Okay, so let's start the machine and see how long it takes to turn it on. This is the confocal scanning laser ophthalmoscope. That means that it's confocal, so you don't see any eyelashes, you don't see any media opacities, but because it's scanning laser ophthalmoscope, you have the distinct appearance of the images because these are basically colored by the software. They are free light sources for the autofluorescence, fluorescing and geography, and also for the true color photos photography. It has 14 megapixel sensor that gives you 15 micron optical resolution. And this is a non mitriatic fundus camera, so you don't need to dilate the pupils. And the minimum pupil size is 2.5 millimeter. This is actually not true because we were able to get 2.0s, even 1.6 millimeters. So this is probably the only time a manufacturer is downgrading the ability of the instruments. It's possible to get 2.0. Uh, this device has two terabytes of SSD and also it has Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and LAN connectivity. This particular device doesn't have DICOM, but there is an option to have a DICOM uh, standard. It only can export in PDFs and JPEGs. There are two ways to connect the ADON to the computer, either via a predefined folder so that all the images taken on the ADON are going to be stored on a, on a folder on your PC, or on a server, or you can directly access the memory of the Adon via a viewer software. And it's actually pretty easy to, to do it. I did it myself. Firstly, I was trying to do it with Linux. It worked for some time, then it broke down, but on Windows devices, it works seamlessly. You don't need to have any problems. Another feature is that most commonly used printers have their drivers already downloaded, so it's ready to be connected via Bluetooth or via LAN to your own printers. So this is also very useful. So after login and if you want to take a shot, this is what you will see. This is the control panel for the taking a shot. Here you can choose different fields, uh, whether it's superior, inferior, temporal, you can choose multiple fields and then the fixation would be changed inside. By the way, this is the ultra wide field off. So even if you have the ultra wide field lens, you can still switch it off. We are going to switch it on. Um, you can use the automatic fluorescent geography, manual fixation, manual fixation and focus or full manual mode. Another thing you can change is the laterality, whether it's going to be uh, right eye or the left. 
effect. So you can take single field, multiple fields, mosaic, horizontal, vertical, and or full. And there's also a 3D stereo image. Uh, all the images can be taken as the uh, infrared, color, autofluorescence, or the mixture of these three. On this panel, you can also change the chin rest height and exposure. It's 40, 200. 40% predefined 50. So let's take a photo and I'm going to self-administer the test on myself. It's going to be right eye, it's going to be a single field and I want to have infrared and color. There is a pop-up window if you click the start just explaining like how to make a best photos you can just click don't show it again and I'm going to do it myself. There is no other technician. Uh, the light is on, my pupils are not dilated. So uh, all I need to do is just to take off my glasses. And if I uh, put my chin on the chin rest, uh, there is like a slight uh, click uh, because there is a sensor in a chin rest. Uh, the machine wouldn't take a shot unless uh, a chin rest is actually, uh, unless the patient has its chin on a chin rest, which is very nice. So the first photo is not going to be visible to you because it's the infrared. And the second one, it's pretty right i think this is the infrared already done and right now the machine has to reset itself to take another pick and this, there was a flash so the examination is done so this is the infrared and let's see the color uh, what you can do here you can change the uh, exposure you can change the gamma you can change the brightness and contrast Another thing you can do, they are also dig digital filters like the True Color Red Plus, and then you can enlarge. This all can be done on the tablet. But if you connect the device to the, uh, to the PC, this is what you get. This is the viewer. See small icons, patient's name and ID, which are blurred, date of examination, and number of photos. There is no way we can search for anything but the name and ID. If we click on the patient this is what we see we can change the brightness contrast gamma use the different types of filters like the rgb blue green red and there's also as i already told you those digital filters like the true color red and red plus red plus plus because this is the slo this is quite unnatural uh, then if you use the red plus plus this is like the old topcon devices we can download everything as JPEGs or PDFs. If we use the PDFs, uh, then we can change the portrait, whether it's landscape or not. We can also send it to the printer. And when, when we download this, this is in the download folder and the images are not anonymized. So I'm not, I also have to blur this. By the way, pupil di diameter was 2.3 millimeters. So this is another patient. Also, um, we can change the filters and get nicer uh, reddish view of the retina. The red plus plus is slightly too much. I usually use red plus and again download everything. Another thing we can do is to caliper. There is this option of measuring CDR. So uh, when you want to get the cup to disc ratio, you can do it easily. Just draw two lines and the machine is doing it by itself. So if you click on the patient, this is what you see. All the images taken are displayed here. If you want to have a mosaic, you can either do it before you select the type of images you are going to take or after. Once the mosaic is done, it's, it stays in the system. Naturally, you can also delete it. Uh, you can do everything with the mosaics as with the single shot. So you can change the filters. You can use the red plus plus and the mosaics looks very nice, very good. So I'm going to show you how to do it manually. If you have just the regular photos, you just select the ones you want, depending on the whether it's the true color or whether it's the FAF, and then you click make a mosaic and the machine is going to do it. And once you, when it's done, it stays, so you don't have to remember to save it. And these are the mosaics. The mosaics are actually very nice. You don't see any any junctions, you don't see any bubble uh, effects, and this is the end result. So sometimes the mosaics don't really work, and I have a case in which I'm going to show you. 99% of time you have very nice, very good images of the mosaic, so the algorithm works pretty well. But in a case like this, so this is the Toxo, 
uh, naturally the algorithm will consider toxo scar as being the either macula amd or optic nerve and then it will just get destructed and create nice images like like that so this is uh, an algorithm going wrong let's move to the good old days without the ultra wide field lens this is the mosaic and right now the single shot looks like this you needed four shots before that autofluorescence looks stunning also without the lens you can change many factors here like brightness contrast gamma and there's also this hypo autofluorescent boost which gives you like very very sharp images so all the functions for the non ultra wide field lenses are still intact so the red plus plus all the filters can be used as well and also the caliper option is ready this is the fluorescent and geography from this camera so i'm going to show you a few fluorescent and geography pics and this Fundus camera has the ability to record movies, so five frames per second, like Spectralis. This is really handy because you don't miss loading those. So let's go back to the ultra wide field. So this is, you see 1.8 millimeters uh, pupil size. You still get nice images of the center and yet another, we can really change the exposure by changing the filters, red plus, it's my favorite one. This is a patient with silicon oil inside. And this is one of few cases in which you don't have the focus on the retina. So uh, giant staphylomas and also like high myopic de degeneration, you, you also stay out of focus. And But overall, the autofocus works very well. You always have the sharp images unless it's like silicon oil or some giant RDD, then, you know, like parts of this will be in focus. Some of that will be out of focus. Naturally, you can also use the mass export. So if you click multiple patients, you can just download all of the images or a single patient, all of the images uh, to your download folder. And then click just download and you can choose whether it's going to be JPEGs or PDFs. Unfortunately, there is no TIFFs or RAW um, export. So this might be a problem for people who are going to be uh, very much into imaging. And there is also a downside of actually doing the mosaics that mosaics have the same resolution as a single shot. So you decrease the resolution of the image. Okay, so that's it when it comes to viewer. Now it's the time for settings. Uh, we have the pre-installed uh, Epson print. There is a screenshot, uh, but it doesn't really communicate with my uh, phone because it, it communicates with, via Bluetooth. So you can uh, do some setup uh, based on the uh, mobile printer or some basically cable printer. All things can be uh, sent to a printer, to USB or to predefined folder. And then you can change the landscape, landscape orientation and also add some uh, predefined information to the report section. Iker has this optional software, which is called Iker Illume. Um, I think right now it works only with the DRS. This is like the artificial intelligence helping you to diagnose diabetic retinopathy or AMD. I think like for disease, it's it's capable. I, I didn't test it, so I didn't really want to talk about this, but there is some option if somebody's interested, I think they can ask people from Iker about this. Up until this point, I was just describing the device. Right now, I'll give you my opinion. And these are my own opinions. They are not endorsed by any company. I wasn't paid by anybody, wasn't helped or offered any, any promises uh, by doing this review. So let's start. What are the plus sides? So firstly, this is the confocal scanning system, which means the permeability and the sharpness of images is just amazing. This is the patient with a vitreous hemorrhage, okay? vitreous hemorrhage and you see it on the screen because the inferior parts are slightly darker than the superior parts. But still, it's just astounding to get a nice image with a vitreous hemorrhage. Let's switch off the device. The best thing about Adon is that it's automatic. That means anybody who knows how to use tablet can use it. Actually, the patient can use it themselves, on themselves. Uh, when I was doing night shifts and I had like a tsunami of patients and many of them were like just cornea patients, I used to do things like sit down in front of the aid and just put their names. The patient would sit down, get the image, 
I will just write down the paperwork and then in the meantime, I will get super clear images without doing the indirect ophthalmoscopy and saving time. It was as if I would have a technician uh, with me on a night shift. This was great. Another feature is that you have three types of add-ons, so you are not wasting money on what you don't really need. And uh, fluorescent in geography has a movie mode. There is no extra charge for a viewer, which I always upload. And the last but not least, this is very accessible in terms of price. It doesn't cost you an arm and a leg. What are the downsides? At least for me, the biggest problem with this Fundus camera is that it's not accepted by reading centers for clinical trials. We do plenty of clinical trials in our private practice. And a few years ago, I wanted to exchange our Fundus camera. I really wanted to buy Adon because, you know, it's price effective and it's automatic and gets you nice images, but I couldn't because of the reading centers. So it was, you know, like Romeo and Juliet, where both parties are in love, but the family says no. And it was super frustrating because we ended up buying inferior Fundus camera that costs more and gets, you know, like worse images than the Adon. So anyway, if that's an issue for you, then unfortunately you have to buy another Fundus camera. It doesn't have ICGA. Another problem is that it doesn't take anterior segment photos. The software functions are very limited and it cannot swivel. Swiveling is very important because for some patients who don't fixate, the only way to get into periphery is just to rotate the camera and then take the photography. So another issue that some people have problems are that the pictures have distinct appearance, but this is like a neutral because they have this digital filters like the red plus, red plus plus, and you can actually uh, get away with this. By the way, the pictures have distinct appearance. If, if the patient has IOL, then they are like overexposed. But this is also quite good because then you know whether the patient had an IOL or has a cataract based on the fundus appearance. Okay, so now is the time to talk about the competition because last time I didn't talk and some people told me that I should also review the competitors. So the first competitor is the Zeiss Clarus. And Zeiss Clarus takes amazing images. I mean, there is something mesmerizing about those images. It's not as if you would look at Botticelli's Madonna. It's just astounding. Those images are confocal, uh, so you don't see any eyelashes, whatever. And because this is not a scanning laser system, then the images are natural. So the colors are very close to the indirect uh, lens, indirect lens of thalmoscopy. Two types of claruses. So there is 500 with the fundus photo and autofluorescence, and there's 700 with the uh, fluorescing and geography. This device has two types of autofluorescence. It takes uh, the anterior segment, so swivels, so uh, you can get further into periphery if the patient doesn't cooperate compared to Adon. So what are the downsides? So firstly, you need a technician. In order to get images like this, you need somebody who's skilled. Secondly, the FA doesn't have a movie mode, so sometimes you can lose like loading phase and important pictures from the loading phase. And maybe most importantly, it's pretty expensive. And then if you want to review the images on a computer, you need another software. But when it comes to beauty, when it comes to quality and resolution of the images, this is probably the best Fundus camera available on the market. Okay, so let's look at the benchmark. So the Optos. Optos is SLO, but it's not non-confocal system. So you see everything. In front, you see the eyelashes, eyelids, uh, floaters, because this is non-confocal, but it's an SLO system. So it's slightly distorted and the images are not as good as in Adon. Uh, the quality. The problem with uh, Optos is that, especially if you're doing the fluorescein geography, the macula and the optic nerve are not depicted really evenly. So it's like not optimal for the AMD or any other problems with the posterior pole. It's great for the periphery because you get 200 shot in a single image. And I know people say, oh, you can do mosaics on Clarus or you can do mosaics on Adon. But for some people, for some patients who are very uncooperative, have troubles fixating, it's impossible to do mosaics. So having a system that gives you 200 degrees, one shot, it's just amazing. But it takes very long time to get a nice shot because just getting the patient's head inside the machine takes a while, right? It's, it's, it's pretty hard. Another problem is that, you know, when, when you do the FA 
and the patient just you know the, the nurse is just injecting the dye and the patient is removing their head then you're losing the 40 seconds or 30 seconds of the most important part of the uh, angiography uh, because it doesn't take also any movies so that's that's the, the the biggest i would say drawback after the price overall optos is a very good machine for imaging the periphery for posterior pole uh, it's not so not so good and because it's not that easy to use i calculated we make 10 times more photos with adon than we do with optos because we have the both devices so this is how you know the, the comparison between optos and adon fall works on the other side the optos has this myriad of options so there is one with the OCT that spans across the periphery. There's one that we have, which is the California ICG that has ICGA and FA. There's one with only FA and color fundus. There's one with the color fundus. So this, this, this platform is constantly being upgraded. And this is definitely a plus that they have so many different versions, different types of, of models. What is also great about Optos is the Optomap software. I think this is the best software for any Fundus camera that's like available. It's very user friendly and has many options. And also Optomap is available for like combining multiple devices, multiple ocular devices that are supportive of DICOM. But Optos is the most expensive clinical Fundus camera on the market. I wonder if you can buy Adon and Clarus in the top versions for one Optos. Okay, so the verdict is, if you're looking for easy to use ultra wide field fundus camera with an excellent price quality ratio, a fundus camera that wouldn't ruin you financially, then I think Adon is for you. Thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed watching my review. Please subscribe to my channel, leave your comments, and stay tuned because I will be posting more reviews of the ocular imaging devices. Thank you and goodbye.